Nice to meet you. I'm Ariana. Nice to meet you, Ariana. I'm Katie. Hi. So I read that Roxy uh, was a dream role of you. Why? Dream role for you. Why? Yeah. Well, Roxy um, has always been a role that I've loved so much. I mean, the show I've always loved. Um, yeah, Roxy has always been a dream role for me um, because I love the Fosse choreography and particularly the character of Roxy. Um, I feel like I resonate with her, especially where I am right now in my life. Um, kind of like the innocence and like the wanting, um, like her wanting a dream and her working so hard for her dream. So I really relate to that. Um, and the material is just so well written and she's just, she's so fun to play every single night. Yeah, it's funny. I was going to ask you how you relate to Roxy and you already told me, but it's funny because Roxy usually has blonde hair, but I feel like the red hair fits her more. So <laughs> yeah, real. Well, actually what's funny is um, in the original production, we're doing the revival production of Chicago, the musical, but the original production was done by Gwen Verdon, um, who is a redhead and um, was Bob Fosse's wife and muse. And she's someone I look up to so much. And in the script, it's actually written, cute redheaded Corrine. And so whenever I say that line, I feel like very personally attached to it because I am naturally a redhead. Um, but I know she's been done by blondes and brunettes and every type of hairstyle and color and so I think what's really special about the role is everyone can just bring themselves to it and make Roxy their own yes yes so you were a fan of the musical and the choreography before what was your favorite song and dance number before and has it changed since you've been playing the role oh wow I <sighs> I don't know if it was always my favorite number, but I feel like I say it is. Um, I've always loved, and this is a number that I'm not even in, is Razzle Dazzle. I love the lyrics. I love watching it. I love the dancing, the choreography. It's so witty, so smart. And it's really what the show is all about. Um, and I, lo I love watching our cast do it, our Billy Flynn and the ensemble with their incredible choreography and dance moves. But my favorite number to perform is probably Nowadays, um, which I didn't anticipate that um, because it it's not big, a big dance number. It's very small and subtle and it's Velma and Roxy with their hat and their cane at the end, but it's just so powerful. And we have the gold curtain in, and it's just, it's just all about how, you know, life is great, but it doesn't always stay. And I think everyone can resonate with that. Yeah. And that's kind of one of the first times we see a color in the show other than like black and red. So it definitely, I feel like pops more. Um, yeah. Speaking of the costumes, they're obviously very like sexy and avant-garde. As someone who's obviously dancing and performing throughout the show, is that easier than like other musical theater costumes? Cause they're more uh, acknowledging like the dancing and the flexibility. I would say it is easier just because there's less costume changes throughout the show. Um, actually Roxy and Velma are the only characters that have multiple costumes. So I do have a few changes and a few quick changes. But I mean, compared to most musicals, it's it's nothing compared to that. So it's nice when I'm off stage, it's actually rest time and or maybe taking time to analyze something versus rushing around getting a costume on. So for that purpose, it's nice. But also I think the black costuming making and the set, the lack of set design for a better word, um, it really just draws you in and it's that minimalist quality. And I think it lends itself to almost like a night out at cabaret. And it's, it's really the Bob Fosse style and it makes you focus on the story, on the movement, on the facial expressions, and it just draws people in. Yeah, it's funny about like your costume changes. When Roxy is quote unquote pregnant, um, she's more demure in like a little short romper. And I'm like, if she was pregnant, that would actually really be on brand. But like, oh, I'm taking it easy with this short little drop. Right, right. <laughs> exactly. It's super cute. So also, there's a lot of bladder work. Obviously, I see like someone who's like standing there for just in case anything happens. But kind of how is it like performing every night on a ladder? 
Well, I will say at every venue, it sometimes feels different based on just the theater and how the set pieces load in. So usually at sound check before each show or not each show, but each new venue that we go to, I um, go up and test it out just to kind of, you know, see where does, does this one wobble and swing. Um, but I'm pretty comfortable up there by now. Um, so it's, it's just like a piece of choreography to me. Like at first, you know, I was a little bit more timid, but now I'm, I'm pretty comfortable and I'm swinging about. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get interested in musical theater? My, my guess has always been like, you've done one of the avenues and then you explored more. So how did you get into it? Yeah, well, that was definitely the case for me. Um, I started out as a dancer and I started dancing when I was like four years old and I went to a performing arts dance studio. So they had a lot of musical theater dance and just musical theater inspired kinds of things um, within it. So I started singing in high school and by that just kind of naturally came acting. And I went off to college um, to a dance program at Oklahoma City University. And that dance program is pretty heavily infused with musical theater. Um, but it wasn't really until um, right after I graduated college that I did my first full-blown musical, but I've always been interested and always considered my, my favorite style of dance musical theater. Um, but yeah, I just continuing to take voice lessons and acting lessons and learning on each job. Um, it's, it's been so wonderful. And I love that I get to express myself in all three mediums, especially in this show. Yes. Yes, for sure. Do you have a favorite medium or is it like you love to be the triple threat? <laughs> I mean, dance is always, and will always be my home and my heart. Um, but I've really come to love acting and singing. And so I, I just love getting to express myself in every way possible. Oh, yes, for sure. So how do you get into character for Roxy? Like, what do you do before each show? And then what, what do you do to kind of wind down? Because like, I'm sure there's just all this energy. Yeah. Well, I think all of us, everyone in the cast has their pre-show routine and ritual. Um, we do do a cast warm up together, which includes both physical warm ups led by our dance captains and a vocal warm up led by our conductor. And so that way we kind of come together as a company just to breathe together and just be be a company together. And then we have a half hour to go finish getting ready and changing. Um, and so I just have, you know, maybe an extra vocal warm up that I usually do, or I always like sing through a part of Funny Honey before I go on. And um, yeah, I think we just have our own like routine and ritual that we do right before we go on. Yes. Um, is there something that you do that you try to do in every city since you're touring around the country? Hmm. Oh, well, one thing I am doing which I think probably a lot of people are doing, but whenever we do have sound check, I always make sure to take a bunch of pictures of the stage and I'm gonna put together like a little album that's like theaters around the country. Um, and so it's something I can look through and think, wow, I performed in all of these theaters and some are so incredible. Some are like smaller, which is great because as the vaudeville feel, some are huge and gorgeous. And it's, it's really fun to play in all these different theaters. Yes. And I know with being on tour, you can only take so many things. Like what's kind of some of your essentials that you make sure fit into like your two small suitcases? Yeah. Well, one thing that's been very helpful is my packing cubes because they're kind of, it's kind of like my drawers within my bag. So mm -hmm. they help me. Um, but in terms of like sentimental items, I... I don't know. I have, I have like little pictures of people that I love. Um, and I have like a Kindle that helps keep me busy, like having an activity on the bus. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess just food things, like little things that give me comfort whenever I can find it. Yes, yes, yes. So Roxy was your dream role and dream is being fulfilled what's kind of your next dream role it doesn't have to be the next role you play but what's kind of next on your wish list and it could not even exist yet it could be oh i would love an adaption of this or a revival of this 
Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm very open, um, but I love anything and all things bossy. So I would always do that. Um, but I, I love dance roles and more than that, I've really been loving, um, like the acting that I got to do with this role. Um, so I'm, I'm so open. Um, I'd love to do Broadway. Um, one day I'd love to do TV film. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not really cornering myself, but, um, I'm, I'm open to anything. And of course it would be a dream to originate a role. Yes. What do you think you learned most from playing Roxy so far? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I think from her, I, I think I've learned to be present with myself. Um, Roxy is a character. She is so present. She will be happy one minute, sad the next, angry, confused, scared. She feels so many different emotions. And in order to play her authentically on stage, I have to be really, really present with her and not let my mind wander anywhere. Um, so I think she has taught me really to be present and in the moment. And while I'm living my dream right now, I mean, that's such a great lesson. And so I thank her for that, I guess. <laughs> yeah. What was interesting about your portrayal, I, I've seen the movie, I've seen it on Broadway, but what's something I've noticed about your portrayal that I feel like I haven't noticed before is that the number, I don't remember the exact name, but when she is just like, oh, I need a boy, like I need two for her big, big dance number, it's just like, yeah, you really should dream big. I feel like I never had that takeaway from seeing it before until I saw your portrayal, which I think is amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it's so fun. That whole monologue every night. It's so fun and it's always different. And I think it just goes based off of how I'm feeling the audience and also how I'm feeling. But I still, you know, follow, you know, the tick points of the direction and everything. But I think what's so special about that big monologue is that I do get to be really present with myself and with the character. And it's always fresh and always different every night. For sure. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Congrats on this dream role and all the things that are coming and being created for you right now. So thank you so much. And I hope to talk to you about future projects. Thank you so much. It was lovely to talk to you. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. Bye.